Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Selamat datang ke Bank Negara Malaysia pada sidang akhbar ini pertumbuhan ekonomi negara serta perkembangan monetari dan kewangan pada suku ketiga tahun 2015 akan diumumkan. Ekonomi negara mencatatkan pertumbuhan sebanyak 4.7% pada suku ketiga berbanding dengan 4.9% pada suku kedua Ekonomi negara terus disokong oleh permintaan dalam negeri So let me continue with the announcement of all the details regarding our third quarter performance the expansion of global economic activity remained moderate in the third quarter while there was continued recovery in the US and UK economies the improvements in the euro area and Japan was modest growth in the Chinese economy moderated slightly to 6.9% in the third quarter with the growth being supported by continued improvement in the services sector. In the Asian region, growth was supported by domestic demand. And this is seen similar to the Malaysian economy. The Malaysian economy registered a growth of 4.7% in the third quarter of 2015 with private sector demand remaining the key driver to growth. On a seasonally adjusted quarter on quarter basis, the economy increased by 0.7%. On the supply side, all economic sectors continued to expand in the third quarter and the services sector expanded, however, at a slower pace of 4.4% as consumer-related subsectors, including retail trade, food and beverages, and accommodation, registered slower growth. The manufacturing sector registered a higher growth of 4.8%, and this was supported mainly by the export-oriented industries, particularly the E&E &E cluster. Therefore, we are seeing, because of the more diversified economic structure, the Malaysian economy is able to expand within the region of 4 to 5 percent. The agriculture sector moderated 2.4 percent due mainly to lower palm oil production. The mining sector grew at a slower pace of 5.3 percent, attributable to a moderation in crude oil production following upgrading and maintenance work at a major oil field. And growth in the construction sector improved to 9.9%, mainly on account of faster expansion in the civil engineering and specialized construction activity subsectors. Private sector activity continued to be the anchor of growth. Private investment recorded a higher growth of 5.5%, while private consumption growth moderated to 4.1%. In the public sector, spending increased by 2.8% during the quarter. Public consumption recorded a more moderate growth, reflecting slower expansion in both emoluments and supplies and services. Public investment recorded a positive growth of 1.8% due to improvement in spending on fixed assets by both the federal government and public enterprises. Net exports turned around to record a positive growth of 3.3% during the quarter due mainly to improvement in exports. Private consumption moderated to 4.1% as households continued to adjust to the implementation of the goods and services tax. Consumer spending remained supported by stable labor market conditions and continued wage growth. Average wage increases in the manufacturing sector were sustained at 5.8%, supported by export-oriented industries. Overall, labor market conditions remained stable 
following low unemployment and sustained demand for labour. Private investment during the quarter expanded by 5.5% and this was due mainly to an improvement in spending on structures, machinery and equipment during the quarter. Forward-looking indicators such as manufacturing investments approved by MIDA remain high in the first quarter of this year, amounting to 49.5 billion ringgit. The progress of ongoing investment projects in services and manufacturing sectors is expected to continue. And over these recent two years, approximately 70% of manufacturing investments approved have been implemented. In addition, foreign direct investment recorded an inflow of 27.1 billion ringgit in the first three quarters of this year. Now turning to the external sector, gross exports registered a positive growth of 5.5% supported by a broad-based expansion of, in manufactured exports amidst a smaller decline in commodity exports. Notwithstanding the continued support from price effects, this positive development also reflected some improvements in export volume, particularly in the E and E exports. Gross imports also grew by 2.9% after negative growth in the second quarter, reflecting an improvement across <coughs> most import components. As a result, the trade balance recorded a higher surplus of 22.2 billion ringgit in the third quarter. As at end September this year, Malaysia's external debt remains manageable at 852.9 billion or 73.4% of GDP. The rise in external debt reflects mainly the valuation effects of the depreciation of the ringgit against most regional and major currencies. The ringgit depreciation affected mainly the offshore borrowings. Nevertheless, the impact of these valuation effects are contained as corporate borrowings are largely hedged. A significant share of these borrowings are intercompany loans with flexible and concessionary terms. The banking sector external liabilities are mainly covered by corresponding external assets. Excluding the exchange rate valuation effects, external debt actually declined by 25.1 billion ringgit during the quarter. Malaysia's international reserves amounted to 417.9 billion ringgit or equivalent to 94 billion US dollars as at 30th October this year. It remains ample to facilitate international transactions with a 1.1 times coverage of short-term external debt. Additionally, not all short-term external debt creates an immediate claim on the international reserves. Debt holders, in particular banks, have external assets to meet their external debt obligations. And banks account for almost three quarters of the short-term external debt. While the bulk of these are in foreign currency, the exposure of banks to foreign exchange risk is generally low as reflected in their net open positions. Turning now to inflation, headline inflation was higher at 3% in the third quarter. The higher inflation was due mainly to the increase in prices in the food and al non-alcoholic beverages category and the smaller negative contribution from the transport category. Prices of fresh food items increased due to so shortages in supply amidst adverse weather conditions and the upward adjustment to domestic fuel prices during the quarter. Meanwhile, core inflation remained relatively stable amidst the modest domestic demand conditions and the lower global commodity prices 
and low inflation in Malaysia's major trading partner economies have partly offset the impact from the weaker currency. <coughs> and as you know, the Monetary Policy Committee maintained the OPR at 3.25% at the recent MPC meeting on the 5th of November. Economic growth is expected to continue to expand <coughs> in the region of 4 to 5 percent in 2016, with domestic demand being the key driver to growth. Headline inflation is projected to be higher in 2016 and to peak in the first quarter of 2016 and moderate thereafter. At the current level of the OPR, the stance of monetary policy remains accommodative and supportive of economic activity. Domestic liquidity continues to be sufficient and financial intermediation has continued to support the economy. It is recognized that there are heightened risks in the global economic and financial environment. These risks are being carefully monitored to assess their implications on our macroeconomic instability and the prospects for the Malaysian economy. This is aimed to at ensuring that monetary policy stance is consistent with the sustainability of the inflation and the overall growth prospects. In the third quarter, the ringgit, along with most regional currencies, depreciated against the U.S. dollar. Uncertainty surrounding the timing of the interest rate normalization in the U.S. and the concerns on the momentum of global growth remain the main factors for the reversal of flows uh, from emerging economies. Movement in the ringgit are event-driven. Ringgit is influenced by both external and domestic factors, and at the current levels, the ringgit remains significantly undervalued. It does not reflect the country's fundamentals, as the current account remains in surplus, unemployment remains low, and inflation is still within Malaysia's long-term average. In the financial system, higher loan disbursements during the quarter together with sustained level of uh, funds raised from the capital market provided continued support for economic activity. Net financing from the banking sector and the PDS market expanded at a stable rate of 8.8% at the end of September. The growth of outstanding banking system loans was stronger at 9.9% as at end September. In particular, the growth rate of outstanding loans to SMEs continued to be strong, growing at a steady rate of 17%. And loans disbursed by the banking system to SMEs was also higher at 69 billion ringgit, and this is uh, important for the functioning of the SME sector and the, its support and value added to economic growth. Domestic financial stability during the quarter remained intact despite volatile market conditions and fragile investor sentiment. And this was supported by the high degree of resilience of our financial institutions as reflected by the strong capital and liquidity buffers continued prudence in risk-taking and risk management practices of banks and orderly conditions in the domestic financial markets are also other indicators that demonstrate the stability in our financial markets. Growth in overall household debt moderated to 7.6% during the quarter. The increase in household debt reflects the sustained growth in housing loans by banks following strong demand for affordable housing, which has continued to exceed supply. As you know, uh, many initiatives have been taken to increase supply of affordable housing. 
new financing was mainly for borrowers with one housing loan, including first-time house owners. Growth in unsecured financing, that is personal financing and credit card uh, financing, remained subdued at 3.4%. Debt servicing capacity continued to be supported by stable employment and sound um, affordability assessments by financial institutions. About half of new loans approved were to borrowers with debt service ratios of below 40%, with average debt service ratio below 60%. The overall impairment level, that is non-performing loans, remain low, and although there is a delay in repayments by some highly leveraged borrowers, such borrowers represent a declining share of household borrowers. Overall, household sector resilience is intact with comfortable levels of financial buffers measured by the ratio of financial assets to debt of about two times. Business borrowings expanded by 11.1% annually, driven by real estate, retail, and wholesale manufacturing and the palm oil sectors. More than two thirds of corporate debt is funded through domestic borrowings. External borrowings are mainly by multinational companies for local operations and domestic conglomerates for overseas activities. The aggregate leverage position of businesses remain below 50% with a healthy interest coverage ratio of 5.2 times. As at end second quarter 2015, cash to short-term debt obligations remain stable at 1.2 times. On aggregate, the average trend in commodity prices and ringgit and the ringgit continues to have limited impact on the debt servicing capacity of most Malaysian businesses. This is further supported by the stress test conducted by the bank on large borrowers and potential losses from the impact of simulated foreign exchange and earnings shock are well within the excess capital buffers that our banks have. Let me conclude. Although the economy is facing the effects of considerable number of shocks, it has remained resilient as reflected by the steady growth performance of our economy. The economy remains supported by diversified sources of growth, and this is important all our earlier efforts to diversify our sources of growth has demonstrated economic payoffs. The economy is also supported by a sound financial system. The current situation warrants, however, a high degree of alert, but not alarm. Our assessment is that the Malaysian economy is expected to remain on the current growth trajectory in this increasingly challenging environment.